today we're spending a little bit of time in my motorcycle trailer this is what we're interested in it's a small car battery I've got this attached normally to this inverter and I'll use this to power my tools if I don't have the generator running you can see this has a cranking capacity of 685 amps so I'll go ahead and disconnect this and we'll bring it into the lab there's a youtuber named Randomtronics He's made a device that he calls Mr. Jules. It's version 1.1 of the hardware now, and he claims it outputs 153.84 joules. Mr. Jules is essentially a bank of capacitors that he discharges across various devices. One of the things he tested was some fuses. One of them in particular was a 30 millimeter 1 amp 250 volt part. Now he said it was a fast blow and it was glass. This is a 3AG style. This is also rated for 250 volts and it's a one amp fast blow part. So what I'd like to do is repeat his test and we'll be doing that with our surge generator. I also have here some 20 millimeter fuses. These are also one amp 250 volt rated. These are a name brand part. They're made by Little Fuse. These have all the UL, CSA, RU, TUV stamps on them. And last, I've got some automotive fuses. These are also made by Little Fuse. They have a 32 volt rating and they are 9 amps. These are approximately 1 quarter by 7 eighths. You can see they're quite a bit larger than the standard 20 millimeters like you would see in some multimeters. A member of EEV blog had written that, you know, car charging systems can put out thousands of amps. So this is where the car battery comes in. I also made this small fuse holder. I'll put this in the pan of ice and we can maybe capture some of this with a high speed camera. Another interesting thing that somebody had brought up was some of these cheap fuse holders. What would happen if the fuse exploded inside and would it contain the blast? Now normally if you're using a fuse holder like this you have something in series with it that's typically going to limit the current anyway. So a holder like this isn't normally going to see a surge event like that directly across it. This is actually a better type fuse holder. Again, it's a name brand and it has all the ratings on it. What I'm going to do is insert one of these fuses and we'll try to see if we can get this case to rupture. So here you can see my contactor. I've just got a push button tied in series with the control signals. So as I push the button, that contactor will trigger. So currently I have my bench power supply attached to the input of this. That supply is going to output about 6 amps of current. And what I'm going to do when I push the button, we'll try to capture this fuse getting damaged with the high speed camera. So I've gone ahead and replaced the fuse. This again is a 1 amp fast blow. I've gone ahead and installed one of these 3AG fuses. Again, this fuse is rated for 1 amp as well, 250 volts. Let's just see if it behaves any differently. And again, this is just hooked to my 6 amp bench power supply. So I now have our battery connected up to our test jig. And again, I have one of the 3AG 250 volt 1 amp fast blow fuses installed. The bench power supply is good for about 24 volts. That's the upper limit on it. So I'm not really too concerned about these fuses rupturing at that low voltage. So now we're going to be running with basically 12 volts. But we have a lot more current available. So let's just see if this fuse behaves any differently. Oh yeah, just a little bit of a spark there. Okay, let's try one of the smaller fuses with the car battery. See if this makes a difference. Well, again, just a little bit of a spark on the edge. Okay, this is one of our 9 amp automotive fuses. Again, these are rated for 32 volts. You know, but again, in the 70s and earlier, these were pretty much the standard fuses that were in the car, so... I don't think you're going to see it explode. Let's just give her a try. Okay, 
you can see I've attached a line cord to this contactor. This just plugs straight into the AC lines of the house. So we'll be applying 120 volts, 60 hertz across this fuse. Again, this is one of the 1 amp 250 volt fast blows. And here we go. Quite a bit more action on that one. Alright, so this is with the smaller fuse. Again, 250 volt fast blow, 1 amp. And you can see with the higher voltage levels, the filament's being destroyed a lot more violently. So unfortunately, for the rest of the test, we're going to have to run them inside of our box. Same fuse holder. Right now we have one of the automotive fuses installed. Again, that's only rated for 32 volts, so there's a good chance that it could actually rupture during this test. So let's just give it a try. Here we go. Unfortunately, we tripped the breaker for the house and the high-speed camera did not trigger. Yeah, the glass is all intact. It's pretty good for a uh, automotive fuse. I would have thought that might actually have ruptured it. All right, let me go reset the circuit breaker. As you can see, I've gone ahead and I've connected our small fuse block up here to our transient generator. I'll go ahead and apply a single transient off this generator. And we can see if we can capture this with the camera. You can see there's basically nothing left of that fuse. A few fragments here. A little bit of dust. That's about it. You can just see how the end of that fuse is buckled. A lot of pressure. You can see the cables going into the bottom of the box. These larger cables are for the higher energy generator. These are for the smaller generator. Of course this is carrying the high voltage and this is the lower voltage. You have to be careful when you're working with these generators. And you can see this is the discharge stick I use. See the small LED in the end. This tells me if there's any voltage present at the end of the tip. This starts illuminating at about 24 volts. I'll keep this across the output of the generator just to be safe. Okay, let me go ahead and we'll move the camera over and get this thing set up. Well, that was pretty uneventful. Okay, I think we're ready to try this again. We'll see if this repeats. It's kind of hit and miss. Maybe it'll explode, maybe it won't. We need to do a little repair work. See, we've tore a fuse holder off. It's basically what's left of the fuse down there. Well, unfortunately, there's no guarantee it looks like that this one's going to pop. We'll just have to try it. So again, this is just the 1 amp fast blow 250 volt 3AG fuse. So I'm just going to clip onto it like so. We're pretty good. See the two generators are all set up. I'm sure our fuse is blown. Ooh. Oh, it is broken. Huh. Oh yeah, look at this. Let's just do this right out on the paper.
Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Just shattered. But this case had no problems containing it. <laughs> I'm impressed. Here's some of the debris from the fuses that we've damaged. So I'd like to give it one more try at damaging this fuse holder. So unfortunately I'm out of the 3AG 1 amp fuses. All I have left are these smaller 20 millimeter parts. Of course these really go off a lot better than what these 3AG fuses did. So what I'd like to do is put one of these inside of this fuse holder. So maybe there's an easy way we can do that. Like with a 22 shell. So what I've done is I crimped the back side of this. The bore of this is just the right diameter to fit this 20 millimeter part in. So I kind of squeezed it down to the length of the 3AG fuse. So we can just load this in here. Put this back in our jig. Turn our generators back on. Let's give this another crack. That's the metal part of our fuse holder. That's the end cap for it. All right, let me turn off the generators. We'll have a look. It just blew a hole right through it. There's our 22 casing here. There you go. So if anything, hopefully this video once again shows that you shouldn't be playing around with fuses. Just put the right ones in there for the job. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. I'd like to welcome you new followers. Glad to have you on board. Maybe we'll test a meter again pretty soon. Till the next meter. Later.